The model C712 and 713 soft serve machines have been engineered and manufactured for dependable operation. This unit, when properly operated and cared for, will consistently produce a quality product. Like all machines, however, it requires cleaning and maintenance. Read the operator's manual before operating or performing any maintenance. The initial assembly and priming procedures are of extreme importance. When the power switch is placed in the on position, the control panel keys become operative. A fluorescent display will be either blank or indicate that the unit has been cleaned. The brush clean counter will display the number of hours since the freezer was last brush cleaned. In the menu program, the arrow symbols and the select symbol function as menu keys. The up arrow increases the value above the cursor and scrolls upward in text displays. The down arrow decreases the value above the cursor and scrolls downward in text displays. Select advances the cursor position to the right and is used to select menu options. With the access code screen on the display, use the select button to set the first code number in the cursor position. Press the select button to move the cursor to the next number position. Continue to enter the proper access code numbers, 8309, until all four numbers are displayed. Then press the select button. If the correct access code was entered, the menu list will display on the screen. Touch the arrow symbols to move up or down through the menu. Select a menu option by pressing the select button. Exit the menu program by selecting Exit from Menu or touch the cone symbol. Selecting Exit from Menu will exit the menu and return the control panel symbols to normal operation. When you enter the store in the morning and find the parts of the machine disassembled and laid out to air dry from the previous night's cleaning, you will need to assemble the parts into the freezer, sanitize them, and prime the freezer with fresh mix in preparation to serve your first portion of the day. To assemble the machine, first make sure the power is off. Next, lubricate the groove on the beater drive shaft and then slide the boot seal over the small end of the shaft into the groove. Lubricate the inside portion of the boot seal and the flat end of the seal that comes in contact with the rear shell bearing. Apply an even coat of lubricant to the shaft. Do not lubricate the hex end. Insert the beater drive shaft through the rear shell bearing in the freezing cylinder and engage the hex end firmly into the drive coupling. Before installing the beater assembly, check the scraper blades for any nicks or signs of wear. If the blades are in good condition, install the scraper blade clips over the scraper blades. Place the rear scraper blade over the rear holding pin on the beater. Holding the rear blade on the beater, slide it into the freezing cylinder halfway. Install the front scraper blade over the front holding pin. Install the beater shoes. Slide the beater assembly the rest of the way into the freezing cylinder. Make sure the beater assembly is in position over the drive shaft by turning the beater slightly until the beater is properly seated. When in position, the beater will not protrude beyond the front of the freezing cylinder. Repeat these steps for the other side. To assemble the freezer door, place the door gaskets into the grooves on the back of the door. Slide the front bearings over the baffle rods. The flanged edges should be against the door. Do not lubricate the gaskets or front bearings. Slide the two O-rings into the grooves on each prime plug. And apply an even coat of lubricant to the O-rings and shafts. Insert the prime plugs into the holes in the top of the freezer door and push down. To install the freezer door, insert the baffle rods through the beaters in the freezing cylinders. With the door seated on the freezer studs, install the hand screws using the long screws on the top and the short screws on the bottom.
Tighten them equally in a crisscross pattern to ensure the door is snug. Slide the three O-rings into the grooves of each standard draw valve. Slide the H-ring and the O-ring into the grooves of the center draw valve. Lubricate the H-ring and the O-rings. Lubricate the top and bottom of the inside of the freezer door spouts. Insert the draw valves from the bottom until the slot in each draw valve comes into view. Position each draw handle with the adjustment screw facing down. Slide the fork of each draw handle into the slot of each draw valve, starting from the right. Slide the pivot pin through the draw handles as you insert them into the draw valves. To increase the flow rate, turn the adjustment screw clockwise. Turn the adjustment screw counterclockwise to decrease the flow. Snap the design caps over the bottom of the door spouts. Slide the two rear drip trays into the holes in the back panel. Slide the two drip pans into the holes in the side panels. Install the front drip tray and splash shield under the door spouts. Assemble the mix pump. Begin by sliding the red O-ring into the groove of the piston. Apply a thin layer of lubricant to the inside of the pump cylinder at the retaining pinhole end. Insert the piston into the end of the pump cylinder. Assemble the valve cap. Begin by sliding the O-ring into the groove of the valve cap. Slide the pump valve gasket into the holes on the cap. Insert the valve body cap into the hole in the mix inlet adapter. Insert the mix inlet assembly into the pump cylinder. The adapter must be positioned into the notch located at the end of the pump cylinder. Secure the pump parts in position by sliding the retaining pin through the cross holes located at one end of the pump cylinder. The head of the retaining pin should be located at the top of the pump. Assemble the feed tube assembly. Slide the check ring into the groove of the feed tube. Install one red O-ring on each end of the mix feed tube. Lubricate the O-rings thoroughly. Lay the pump assembly, the pump clip, and the mix feed tube in the bottom of the mix hopper for sanitizing. Slide the large black O-ring and the two smaller black O-rings into the grooves on the drive shaft. Thoroughly lubricate the O-rings and shaft. Do not lubricate the hex end of the shaft. Install the hex end of the drive shaft into the drive hub at the rear wall of the mix hopper. Repeat these steps for the other side of the machine.